Hello and welcome to the Fat Boss Guide to the Councils of Elders, 10 Man Normal in the Throne of Thunder. Yes, hello! <laughs> that <laughs> intro <laughs> took so long. <laughs> Terrace of the End, fuck! Either way, yeah, this this fight is really, really cool. It is a cool. great fight. Um, it's like a council boss, but one of them when, once one of them dies, they don't all get their health back, so it's actually quite cool because you can multi-dot them. And there's like, Garajal's comeback from Beyond the Grave in love spirit him. form. We love him, so... Yeah, he just doesn't go away, but it's a really, really cool fight. Now, for this encounter, you want to bring two tanks, two to three healers. I mean, you could quite easily two heal it, providing Norm fucks up. You want one melee DPS with a strong interrupt, and ranged DPS with slowing abilities is kind of useful. Um, multi dotters, you could say, are very useful here because obviously there's four targets. However, you do need to do quite a lot of single target damage yeah, at, focus. at a lot of intervals, so multi dotting is, isn't necessarily the best thing here. Now this encounter consists of four bosses and each one has completely different abilities from each other. Now as we said, Garajal has also made an amazing return in spirit form, which is absolutely wonderful. And what he does, he consistently possesses each boss which gives them a new mechanic to play with, so either their moves will change up a little bit or they'll gain a new move. Um, however, one thing is universal across all the bosses when they are possessed by him. They start gaining something called Dark Energy. Once one of the bosses reaches 100% energy, they'll start doing high AoE damage on the raid that increases with each pulse. Now the only way of stopping the dark energy from getting to 100% is doing 25% of the boss's health while they are possessed. And you can tell when they're possessed because they're all purpley and glowy. And, and I think their name actually changes. Does it? I believe so. Oh, that's crazy. Um, so yeah, you can actually see that. Now as soon as you do do that 25% uh, HP off of that boss, Garajal will just leave the boss and he will also leave them with a buff that will increase the damage they do by 10% and it will also increase the dark energy re uh, generation that they do by 10%, however this only really affects them when they are repossessed. Because right now they can't do it. Yeah, they only gain dark energy of course when they are possessed by Garajal. So whenever a boss is possessed, you do want to focus pretty much all your damage on that boss until Garajal leaves that boss, which is of course 25% um, of their health. So that's something that is really kind of like baseline on the fight. You just need to know that really from the start. So the way that we're going to explain the bosses is like look at their individual abilities and we'll also explain what abilities change or what new abilities they'll get while they are possessed. Now in terms of what boss will get possessed in what order, for us it was it was always in a set order. Every time we wiped on this boss and we came back, the possess order was exactly the same. If that's actually set in stone every single week for every single guild in the world, we're not too sure. So it might actually change, but we're gonna talk as we're gonna explain the fight as if it is the same every single time. And first we're gonna talk about Frost King Malak. So as we said, Frost King Malak is the first boss that is going to be possessed, and we're going to talk about him first because he's lovely. Now he has two abilities, one of which is Frigid Assault. Now this is like a, an empowered melee hit that he does on the tank, which applies a debuff um, that when stacked to 15 stacks will stun the tank for 15 seconds. Now you can tank swap this, but it can be a pain, and we will explain why this is a pain a little bit later. You need to know what the bosses, the other bosses do and why it is a bit of a pain to tank swap, but you can tank swap, know that, but it's not essential. All you need to do is just pop a huge cooldown just as you're about to be stunned, and then that'll last most of it, and then just let your healers know I'm stunned. He'll also do something called Biting Cold. This is a debuff applied to a random player that does, uh, on application, 94k damage, and then they'll start dealing 115k damage to all allies and themselves within four yards every two seconds for 30 seconds. So you need to move out the group when you have this. Now when he becomes possessed, which is when he starts gaining his dark energy, he'll start he'll stop casting bite and cold and instead he'll start casting frostbite. And frostbite essentially is bite and cold, but it works slightly differently. With frostbite you gave an additional five stacks of the buff, and for every stack you you take an additional 22k damage per tick. For each player that is within the frostbite range, you will drop two stacks. So you need to have two players on top of the player with frostbite. You will lose four stacks and be left with one, and the stack cannot go below one. You want to make sure that you have two people with the frostbite target in order to minimize the damage. You could just leave the person with five stacks, but they're going to get yeah, it they're going to go so down much. very very quickly. So it's it's like the complete opposite of the biting cold instead kind of, of running yeah. away you need two people to stack up on them yeah and it's very obvious between the different uh, the, between the two when you have um the biting cold it's your screen doesn't change at all whenever you have frostbite you get like a load of like a visual effects going around your screen so it's very obvious between the two now the second boss we're going to talk about is Karaz. <laughs> come on panda land 
It's the boss that rolls around and his name is very confusing and he is the second boss to be possessed. Now this boss only has one ability and he does not melee hit and will get aggro on anyone and this ability is called Reckless Charge. Now he will make a dark like kind of bubbly line between himself and a random player's location and then he will charge up to that player dealing 90k damage and knocking back anyone who is in that path. Um, so all you have to do is move from it and that's all that boss does at all while he is not possessed It's it's so so simple really really cool. Just move away from him Otherwise, he's charging around the whole time now when he comes becomes possessed and is starting to gain dark energy um, He doesn't actually change at all really basically when he rolls and finishes his roll He will become stunned for 20 seconds However, when he is stunned he gains a 50% damage reflect back to the damage dealer now this is kind of in a horrible, this is quite a horrible mechanic to be honest because when they are possessed you need to nuke them because you want to get them out really really quickly because of course you don't want them to get 100% energy. But yeah. then again you don't want to kill yourself. Exactly, so it is finding a balance and just don't kill yourself so do watch yourself. Luckily it, is, it isn't It is kind of like how um, the last boss in Spirit Kings was where it was kind of have I done too much damage because it's a dot, this is instant so you will know if you're doing too much damage you just stop doing damage and you just won't kill yourself so just be aware of the uh, um, the balance that you need to keep but otherwise that's the only thing he does so really he stops rolling around as much he gets stunned and he has that damage reflect and the next boss we're going to talk about which is the third boss to be possessed is high priestess Mali. Uh, and this boss has two abilities wrath of the lower this is an interruptible cast that will deal around 140k damage to the tank you should try and interrupt as many of these as possible whoever is tanking this as you will be tanking her alone because of her next ability which is the, the blessed lower spirit this will summon an ad that will do nothing but move towards the boss with the lowest HP and once it reaches that boss it will heal them for 5% of their total health. These ads can be CC'd but if you do not kill them within 20 seconds they will just heal the boss where they were going to in despawn. So we had the tank and two additional DPS assigned to this whenever it spawned in order to CC and do kill it using chains of ice and stuff like that to actually slow it. Now because she is sending out this healing spirit thing she needs to be tanked alone and away from the other mobs. She's also a massive pain in the ass to move. She is very, very difficult to move. It is so annoying to move her. This is why kind of tank switching is far from clean or easy. As well as the other tank actually tanking two mobs. So you've got to try and pick up two mobs off of that tank. It's 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 a pain. Just that's that's the reason why, really, to because of this mob. Now when she becomes possessed, her cast will now do extra damage and it is still interruptible um, and she will spawn a shadowed lower spirit instead of a blessed one. The shadowed one will focus on a player and start move towards them. If it gets within 6 yards of that player, it will explode and instantly kill that player. It, it basically can't reach that player within 20 seconds, um, otherwise it will just jump to them and instantly kill them. You want all DPS assigned to CCing and DPSing this ad and whoever has this ad focused on them, they just need to kite it away. Now at this point you can move her to where the other tank is and because of course she isn't like spawning the healing spirit and then you can just cleave more. Cleave is so good, multi shot in, chain lightning, oh it's all there, it's lovely. So this is quite a good point and just make sure you do move her back before she becomes unpossessed um, in order because otherwise she might come straight out and then heal someone which is bad. So just move her, just make sure you do move her back in enough time. And the last guy to be possessed and the last boss is Sol the Sandcrawler. And this boss has two abilities, he has Sandbolt and this is an interruptible cast that will deal about 150k damage to a random player and it's also AoE, it'll hit everyone within 5 yards as well, it's like a burst effect. Um, so this is why you really want to bring your melee DPS to purely for interrupting this. However, that melee DPS alone isn't really able to interrupt it himself. Therefore, you should only really interrupt the cast that are on low health players. However, if you do have like a Paladin tank, a Paladin tank and a melee DPS with like good communication can pretty much get every single one of them if they do it properly. Yeah. So, but essentially prioritize interrupts on low health players. The boss also has something called quicksand and he will just summon a pool of uh, quicksand at a random player's location. And this will snare anyone within 7 yards of that location so you've got to really be spread for this mechanic. Now the pool will also tick for 140k damage every second to anyone that is inside it. 
Also, if you run into the quicksand pool, you will become slowed and eventually rooted inside there as well. So, one, don't run back in, and two, make sure you get dispelled and get out as soon as possible when this quicksand does spawn. Otherwise, just leave it alone. Now, when this guy's possessed, he'll start casting Sandstorm. When he does cast Sandstorm, the, the raid will start taking some ticking damage, and also any quicksand pools will disappear and will be turned into living sand. Living sand is like a little sand elemental that does nothing but melee hit. Now, when they do spawn, they all seem to have threat on the tank that has the highest threat on soul. However, it does feel a little bit odd and we did have situations where healers would suddenly get aggro on them and stuff yeah, like that not 100 yeah but if you just pick them up if you're nice and quick when you pick them up it should be fine now the ads themselves only have about one mil health and should really just be aoe down really really fast before the next sandstorm if they are not killed before another sandstorm they will heal to 100 percent and get 100 percent damage increase for each time they are alive during a sandstorm so it can just go on forever yeah. and they just have a retarded amount of damage increase but AOEing these ads generally isn't an issue, they die very quickly, they have like 1 mil health, and when they do die, they do leave a pool of quicksand, which will reanimate whenever a sandstorm is cast. Now as they'll all be dying by the tank, but when you are tanking them you've got to be kind of careful because you've got to start moving as they are dying because otherwise you'll have like 8 quicksand pools on top of you, ticking for 140. Yeah, you're going to die quick. So you have to make sure that you do get out of that when you are tanking them as they die. So that's all the boss's abilities, and that's what all the bosses do when they are possessed. Now, however, there are some extra things you kind of need to know going into this fight. Now, whenever any of the bosses isn't possessed, you should be focusing all of your damage really on Sol the Sandcrawler. His sand bolts and quicksand is just a pain to this fight and if he gets possessed again, so he gets possessed a second time and casts Sandstorm, there's going to be so many more quicksand things up and you're going to have like 16 odd ads or something like that. So it's just going to be really, really unbearable. You should really try and kill him before second round of possessions gets to him. And also, because you do have that melee DPS interrupt on that boss, he is literally full-time on that boss until he is dead. We managed to do it with one spare DPS on the side and we were three healing it, so it, it, it is easily possible. Also, if you manage to deal 100% of the possessed boss's HP, so if any boss is possessed and um, you manage to get it down really quickly for some reason, you like, like had cooldowns up or something like that, and... Um, in the, his energy is really, really low. You want to kind of just swap off and start DPS in Sol again. You just want to, anytime you can get extra damage on Sol, do get extra damage on Sol. Just make sure that this boss doesn't reach 100% energy. And you should really, like, be very, very careful of this and make sure you can get him back down out of the possession before he starts AoE ticking. Once you do actually manage to get Sol down, it's after that, it's pretty much kill whichever one you want. It doesn't really matter too much, to be fair. Um, we recommend that you probably kill the. Uh, high Priestess yet next because the fucking healing thing is quite annoying. Um, but generally, it doesn't really matter. And this fight, I love it. It's really, really fun. Yeah, it is really, really Really good. enjoyable fight. So thank you for watching, guys. If this guy did help you out, then please do give it a like. It helps us out a lot. And um, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Thank you.